For at TV, the world is thinking. Well, 10 days ago, uh, something uh, quite remarkable happened. The Nobel uh, Committee awarded the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and to Al Gore. Right, the, hey, please. Uh, it, it generated a, a tremendous amount of uh, commentary, uh, both inside and outside science, both inside and outside the media. Uh, <clears throat> and it generated quite um, uh, powerful responses. Uh, I noticed on the BBC News uh, hit Have Your Say response, uh, it generated the highest number of responses to a news item they had posted there um, uh, than any other uh, single item. I just want to draw attention to uh, an implicit, what I think is was an implicit formula uh, that uh, was uh, revealed by that award. And that formula uh, is that good science plus good communication equals peace. And in climate change terms, peace, I, I suspect, we have to read as reducing the risks caused by climate change. But it, to me, it seemed implicit that good science, as represented by the IPCC, plus good communication, as represented by Al Gore, will deliver peace on Earth. <coughs> uh, uh, earlier this year, the, <coughs> the IPCC reported its fourth assessment report, um, <coughs> and uh, uh, the headline in the Guardian newspaper the day after the science uh, working group reported said this. It said, the United Nations vast report will end the scientific argument. Now will the world act. So both of these two uh, reflections, the award of the Nobel Peace Prize and the way in which the Guardian newspaper interpreted the IPCC fourth assessment report, seems to me, uh, both of them seem to me to uh, display uh, a, a very poor understanding uh, of how the world works. Also, a very poor understanding of actually what science can do for us. It's not a case that we will have the scientific debate, then once we agree what the scientific evidence is, we simply then have to communicate it, peace will break out, the world will act, and the problem will be solved. That is not what science's role is. It is not the way that most political, public political issues uh, <coughs> are resolved, and it's certainly is not the way in which climate change uh, is going to be tackled. Science is only the beginning. Communication, awareness raising, which I think is what Al Gore was awarded it for, is only the beginning. The real issues are about why we disagree about what to do about climate change. And science cannot provide us with the script that we all read from. So I just want to illustrate that uh, basic thesis of mine with three uh, observations about how science <coughs> is in danger of, or at least is perceived to be, overreaching <coughs> its legitimate role. One is around the question of what is dangerous climate change. The predominant number, uh, if you ask uh, people, both in science and in policy, uh, is that two degrees of warming above pre-industrial levels. We've already had 0.7 or 0.8, but two degrees is what constitutes dangerous climate change. Um, this uh, <coughs> a magazine ca advertising campaign from Christian Aid, you recognise that, if you can see it, just came out in the last few months. Christian Aid urged uh, UK uh, citizens to write to MPs uh, <coughs> in relation to the climate change bill uh, that it should... Uh, set in, uh, in target uh, an 80 percent reduction by 2050 but the point here is they say scientists have agreed that the earth must not exceed an average temperature rise of two degrees celsius otherwise catastrophic climate change will be unavoidable have scientists agreed that <coughs> is it actually the role of scientists to agree what is dangerous and what is not zero degrees of global warming is dangerous for hundreds of millions, if not billions, of people on this planet. In other words, climate is dangerous, let alone climate change. So saying that two degrees of warming is dangerous 
uh, uh, is actually uh, rather insulting um, to the many hundreds of millions or billions of people uh, who find climate uh, risks not manageable at the moment. Two degrees, on the other hand, is safe. Certainly it's safe for me. I live in a comfortable detached house halfway up a hill in Norwich with a lot of money, social capital uh, and, and mobility. Two degrees of global warming is not dangerous for me. My point simply is that science can contribute to debates about what constitutes danger, but it is not, quote, the scientists to tell the world what is dangerous. The second example is from the Stern Review uh, last year. The headline report in the Stern Review on the Economics of Climate Change said that uh, unmitigated climate change will cause between 5 and 20 percent uh, loss to global uh, wealth, uh, <coughs> global GDP. Uh, used classical economic uh, arguments, uh, plus one or two uh, extras, to come up with that figure. Um, I simply suggest that that is an incomplete uh, uh, and rather inadequate way uh, of approaching uh, climate change. Um, the Stern Review said nothing about what the value of climate is. All it was trying to do was to say, what is the potential economic loss of climate change? What is the value to cultures and societies and individuals around the world simply of climate? No economist uh, has actually tried to tackle that question. Uh, and thirdly, um, and this again is, is where science gets entangled, I think wrongly, is that the Kyoto Protocol uh, again, is not a political response to climate change that you can read from a scientific script. As Steve Rayner and uh, Gwyn Prinz pointed out this week in the journal Nature, uh, the Kyoto Protocol is not the only game in town. In fact, their argument, which I largely agree with, is that the Kyoto Protocol has failed, uh, it's a bad investment, and we should cut our losses and actually try to recast our political and poli uh, policy response uh, in a completely different way. So um, those are my points that I open with, Tony. Um, I think that there's a real danger that we have confounded uh, science's role, true role, with uh, an inappropriate role in relation to climate change. We've constructed uh, a very rigid monolithic problem, climate change, with a very rigid and single-minded solution, the Kyoto Protocol, and we actually need to go back several sta stages, reform the problem, and rethink the solutions. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. <laughs>